work. Ooh, yeah, we are working. <laughs> For those of you that are visiting uh, with us, I'm Keith Rogers. I'm like all the other guys in here. We're full-time preachers, and we do our best. And uh, we kind of have a tradition here. If we wear a tie, that means we're preaching. And Joe came up and said, oh, you're preaching. I just about took my tie off. But anyway. <laughs> As you know, I usually use a PowerPoint, but boy, lately, PowerPoint has not been doing the thing for me. It seemed like every switch I should turn, I do. And so anyway, I'm just using a, the old-fashioned way, and, and I'm not very good at that either. But anyway, we're glad that visitors, you're here, and we have a lot of our members that are, are out today. Uh, Tim's in Alaska. Uh, with Sue's sister Ann in Anchorage and they woke up was it day before yesterday with 36 inches of snow and they have a winter storm coming in this Wednesday so boy am I glad here I'm here so anyway I didn't really know what to talk about that's the hardest thing for me and uh, I was just looking around and all of a sudden uh, I was looking at uh, Matthew, the sixth chapter, starting with verse uh, 25, and it's about do not worry. Now, I know that uh, this is a, a reading that a lot of you are aware of, and I would just like to share some thoughts with that, because this is a sermon for Keith Rogers. I have three fingers pointing at me when I, if I point one out. But I, we're so uh, limited on guys this morning, I'll just kind of read part of, I'm going to be, use, uh, be reading 25 uh, down to uh, the end of the chapter. And this is the uh, New King James Version. And Jesus says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, it is life not more than food, and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor weep, nor gather into barns, yet their heavenly Father feeds them. And then he asks us, are you not more important than birds? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit of this anyway? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Nor do I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory uh, was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not as much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What we should eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows what you need, uh, that you need all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Suffic sufficient is the worry for the day I, I'm really messing that last one up sufficient for the day is its own trouble uh, you know as I, I thought about that verse it, it's a beautiful verse uh, but you know uh, you go down to Spokane and they have these huge uh, I guess you would ca call them in convention halls huge and millions well I don't know if millions but a lot of people go to seminars like I, I probably could ask you but how many of you would probably go to a seminar right now on uh, your financial future I can ask that since Tim isn't here Tim would be holding his hand up I'm not picking on Tim now but anyway uh, we could all probably use a lot of that or maybe uh, there would be a seminar how to ride a Harley motorcycle I know one person here that would go there uh, Scott I'm picking on you now so anyway or maybe a seminar could be on uh, I don't know how to improve your your family life as far as family relationships or how to how to survive with teenage kids I'm not going to ask how many people would go there but anyway uh, but would any of you attend a seminar that would be on let's say 
how to worry more? Well, I see a few people shaking their head. But anyway, and I, I don't guess too many of you would feel like you would like to learn how to worry more. But I'd like you to kind of think about that just a little bit as I start looking at, uh, I think we probably are all an occasional visitor to worry. Maybe some of us find it more mildly uncomfortable and some of us may find it pretty intense. Uh, whether we express worry as a distraction uh, every now and then or whether worry could be immobilizing our whole world, those are some things that we all as Christians would rather not worry as much. And uh, we are sometimes, well, we'll get to that situation later. <laughs> I would like to think about worry as one of those pests of life. And uh, if you allow me as a retired science teacher, I would like to try to compare worry to a wasp. Now, I discovered worry wasp is kind of hard for me to say, so if I go through it, you know that what I'm talking about. Wasps are a pest, but boy, can Satan develop those wasps of worry. Uh, I would just like, to, like you to think just a little bit to introduce the wasp of worry. Uh, they can build a nest in our heart. Uh, and that nest, you can probably understand, they can become very ingrained in our hearts. You know, they can dominate our lives. And our goal today is hopefully we can swat that's a good southern word. Well, I guess it's good here, too. Swat the wasps of worry and direct the pest away more than we have them hanging around. Uh, you know, wasps come in all kinds of colors and types. I'm talking about the wasp in your heart. But they're also the physical wasp. Uh, you know, we've only been here about seven years now, and we go to Colorado in the summertime, but our wasps here are little bitty guys. And I thought, man, that, those aren't bad. Then one stung me, and I changed my mind. And then we had a nest. My goodness, that thing was this big around. It was down by the creek. And I didn't mess with it because over history before, uh, in South Texas, I was helping my brother-in-law connect a, a power line, John. And I was reaching behind a thermostat outside with a breaker box thing on it. And there was a whole mess of those big red Texas moth. And one hit me before I even know they were back. And you know, I thought somebody had hit me with a, a brick almost. Well, a baseball bat would be better. I swelled up like after being Rocky Five or whatever that movie was where Rocky gets all beat up. But that hurt. And uh, I could imagine riding on a motorcycle, Scott, at the speed limit. And, and one of those, I don't know why I said the speed limit. I know you go to the speed limit. But anyway, uh, uh, you know, a wasp catches you inside your goggles or whatever. I can't imagine. You realize the damage that a wasp can do. So I would just like to kind of talk a little bit about pain and the pain that wasps the physical wasp can bring, and also talk about uh, the pain that gets into our hearts from wasp. And uh, uh, actually, that pain of the wasp and worry can actually almost define a person. I've seen it change people to uh, exactly that's all they do is worry. I hate to talk about my wonderful grandmother Rogers, uh, but living in New Mexico, Fort Sumner, she had a reason to worry, but I won't go too far with that. But, you know, they, they came into New Mexico in a covered wagon uh, before New Mexico was even a state. Uh, they did homesteading in a ground, what do you, half ground, what do they call the thing that's half ground? Uh, what? Shallow ground? Yeah. Uh, that or a, 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 
I'm sorry, I'm having an 82-year-old moment right now, but it was a, a dugout, I think. Yeah, but anyway, and you know, they did have Indians. That was during the time of the long Navajo walk, and she did have some things to worry about. But there's some things I learned from her later on I'll share that, that, that meant so much to me. We all have things to worry about. Uh, but my granddad, getting back to the farm, uh, he had a way to kill wasp. Uh, we had them there, and he would do it in the nighttime. You know why he did it in the nighttime? Yeah, wasp can see in the daytime. <laughs> That's not very brilliant, was it, that I said. But he used a long stick. In fact, they used to fish with cane poles for perch and catfish. Well, he had a old cane pole that he'd cut about this long, and he wrapped a tow sack. How many of you know what a tow sack is? Oh my, this is New Mexico we're talking. Gunny sack. All right, a gunny sack is what you store gunny in, right? What's your gu gunny carry by granddad Tommy? <laughs> I love that. Anyway, he would put coal oil. How many of you know what coal oil is? Okay, how many of you know what kerosene is? Okay, kerosene. <laughs> Today it would be, boy, I'm having a hard time with this sermon. I think I better just quit. <laughs> anyway, he would, pull, 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 uh, he would put uh, diesel, that's easy to say on it, and he would light it, just like one of these torches you see in the whatever movies, Gage, that, that uh, the, the conquerors are coming, right? Anyway, and he would walk up to that wasp nest and it's dark and he would just stick that thing under the wasp neck and a uh, neck uh, nest and he had fried wasp I, I don't know if there was a market for that <laughs> that might be a way that alvin we could get rich start frying <laughs> no let's don't go there anyway he would kill all the wasp and, and it was very safe well today how do you kill wasps? I know all of you know, you use wasp spray. Right. And that wasp spray is supposed to spray from, I think it's guaranteed 18 feet. That's about from here to crystal. Do you realize that's a pretty good spray? You could actually use it for bear spray. I don't know after the, the, the battle of whether it, the bear will have parts of you, Never mind. we won't go there. <laughs> but you know, uh, it's a pretty, pretty good way to do it. And the granddad did a good job with the coal oil and the, everything else. But today, you know, as I explained how you can get rid of the wasp of worry, I don't want you thinking I'm going to try to leave you a, a, into a, something that will, will hurt you with your wasp, uh, whatever problem you may have, and especially the one I have. There are good ways to do away with wasp of worry, and, and Jesus tells us that. And you know, before we look at the scriptures that Jesus gave us about worry, uh, I'd like to just set some parameters of what I'm talking about. You know, worry can actually be good if it's used right. I, I can remember having to study for a test, and I was pretty worried about it. But I knew to not pray just before I took the test and say, Lord, help me get through this test and have not having studied at all. And I know we could do a lot of things about worry. Uh, and I'm not going to get into those things, but you can probably visualize sometimes in your life you've had to worry about something and you did something about it and, and everything came out pretty good. But if some people is, let's say you're some person is trying to get a job, you really want a job, but you don't any, do anything nowadays with your portfolio. Uh, you just say, well, you think worrying is accomplishing something as far as accomplishing something about what you're trying to do. You know, uh, I hope Joe doesn't mind me using him, but he, he participates in this Iron Man stuff. Uh, I used to run a lot until I hurt my back, but I learned real quickly when I ran in the high school, when I read the mile, you just couldn't worry about it. If you wanted to finish it, you got to get out there and participate. And the same thing with anything you do in life. Uh, you know, uh, well, anyway, won't go too far with that either. But uh, uh, there's a big difference between uh, the, facing your task 
and trying to get the task accomplishing through study or whatever. That's where worry is good. And then we'll talk about some people that, um, oh, I don't know, many people will confuse worry with action and it's not. It, it starts ending up with procrastination and that's really not what we're talking about today. People who worry uh, incessantly about uh, themselves, uh, worry is an action that's not really happening. Uh, to properly understand what this passage is today, we must distinctly between productive worry and non-productive worry. And I think we pretty much understand that. And you've probably been around people who have non-productive worry and those that use it. And I'm not going to deal with that a whole lot, but just want to bring it up. And using the words of Jesus we just heard, uh, we can... Uh, burn down a neighborhood if we try to burn the wasp uh, like my granddad did and he didn't know what he was doing. Uh, he knew what he was doing. I can see me burning down the whole neighborhood with trying to use a, 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 fl a, a what would you call it? A, a, oh, it would be a flag, a torch, a torch of, of worry. But first I'd like to look at three pictures people and uh, let's picture kind of what they're doing I'm learning some interesting words <laughs> purple people uh, big black bug uh, you know all this stuff thank you all for your grace first is a uh, person to worry I want to talk about is is the uh, oh I guess you'd call him the happy cheerful warrior You've met them. Life is, is just a, a happy walk down the beach. Uh, they don't worry for the next five minutes, less more the next five years. Uh, completely irresponsible to, uh, you know, to do things, get, to get things done. Life is just a lark. Life is a, a motto to them is probably, why worry? Just be happy and uh, maybe take a nap or whatever, you know. Life itself, uh, for the Christian though, is not just a walk in the beach and, and being happy. And the Bible, Bible tells us how we need to be, you know, responsible for a lot of things. The second person that I'd like to talk about worries to the max. Have you ever been around someone who worries a lot? Oh yeah, and how does that control their their personality or how they're doing for that day? Well, they're just worry warts, as we'll call them in a minute. They don't. They worry about everything. They worry about. Uh oh, did I leave the that roast on the burner when I left house this morning, or am I about to run out of gas, or uh, uh, I didn't mean to step on somebody's toes because I see some people grinning, so I'm not, you know. But anyway, worry, worry. It can cause deep anxieties, it can cause anxiety. It, it really can actually get you sick, but uh, the worry work is going to probably his or her uh, motto for the day is going to be, why not worry? I have a right to worry, you know. We won't go any further with that. For, further with that. I think most of us probably fall right in the middle of worrying. Uh, I think younger, I worried more. But as a young person, you have so many decisions to make. And, but there was a lot of prayer in there. You know, every young person has a, you know, when they, gra well, am I going to graduate? That was a pretty big worry for me. And, uh, you know, uh, got in college and, you know, if I made a C, I felt pretty good because I was working 40 hours a week and I knew I wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. And it just, uh, uh, when when my beautiful wife graduated, she was uh, uh, what do you call that? Kamu uh, Sim? What was that? Really good. Okay, <laughs> uh, it was Kamu Sim Blada or something like that. And, uh, there you go. You got it. You guys know comma. But anyway, when I graduated, it was praise the Lada. Okay, so <laughs> anyway. Uh, 
But usually those uh, people like us really know how to worry in this part of the, the, the sermon or the lesson that Jesus taught. We, we all understand. As we mature, we get better. But I, I would like to just talk about the third person, too, is a person that has a terrible catastrophe hap happen. And this is just almost too personal to talk about. But think of the, the forest fire we had this summer. And all uh, 100 and, what was it, 90 homes that were burned. And th th those people know what worry is. They're worry, or I guess you could call it... Uh, well, it's worry, but it's also a catastrophe, and, and there's a catastrophical worry. I just made up a new word, I think, but it didn't sound like it. But, you know, and where, where do we deal with those people? Well, thank God for the church here, and the church is everywhere. You, you meet with them, you pray with them, you listen to them, you help them with their worries. And, and I'm just so thankful that we have people in Spokane and Airway Heights and out here that are like that. And so I guess all three of these hear a sermon on Matthew 6 through the chapter. Some preachers, I, I'm not a preacher, but I, I see some preachers that would gladfully use a very eloquent service and probably make these people feel terrible. Make them feel like, you know, you're, you're going to hell, basically, because you worry. And that's not what Jesus is talking about here. Jesus is talking about, you know, worrying is like, um, oh, I guess you would just say it's a, a open co consideration of God guiding you through whatever you're dealing with. And uh, so... Jesus said, don't worry. So worrying is a lack of faith, and it shows a lack of commitment to some people. How will each of these people worry? Well, the irresponsible person, we've already established that if they hear a sermon on worry, they're going to be so glad because of their happy-go-lucky lucky personality. Good, I don't have to worry at all. I don't. And you can visualize what that person needs. They need some help from people who love them. And how about the person that's really rebuked by the sermon, uh, you know, that is really the worry wart? And how's that person going to react? Well, they're going to go home at night and think about that sermon they may have heard and say, wow. How am I going to do this? I tried my best not to worry, but now, after listening to that sermon, I'm really worrying about worrying too much. <laughs> and it, it, it's kind of a, you know, it's it's true. How, how, and of course, the third thing we've already kind of talked about, the unescapable, terrible thing that's happened. We, we all know them. We've all had loved ones we've lost. We've lost homes. All of that. Again, the best thing, of course, to help them is, is we must be very sensitive to those people's needs. We must be very helpful for, to prayer. I love the prayer groups we have here and the small groups uh, each Sunday night. And that's all about praying and helping each other. And uh, uh, I, can't, I can't say anything other than good about that. And so... Uh, An uncontrollable warrior is uh, is usually one that has never heard of God's providence. They've never heard of prayer, or more than anything else, I, I love a saying that Sue and the ladies have on a little bracelet, and that says, "God is larger than our promises, our problems." Our problems. Okay. And which should, could also say God is larger than our worries. And so, anyway, that's just something I would like to kind of leave us with right now. And the worry warts, uh, we all know some and like to comfort some. Like I said, I was more of that. 
some of you probably didn't have to think about you were going to Vietnam. Some of you probably didn't have to think about uh, Desert Storm or just a lot of those things. And uh, oh, what are you going to do? Boy, that was hard for me. You know, my dad was a farmer and a, a principal, and mom was the fastest thing with a hairbrush you'd ever see. And uh, I love my mom, don't misunderstand me. But we have to make decisions. And I, I feel for the kids today. You know, when I was growing up, it, it was basically I was going to be a farmer or a teacher and, or, or military. And my time, I thought, had come for the military. I got that little greetings card. And at the time, we were teaching on the Navajo Reservation. And since I was teaching at a federal school for the Indians, I didn't know it, but I'd had my bags packed to go to Vietnam. And I didn't go because I was teaching on the Navajo Reservation. So you never know how God... Now, the, I think the biggest decision in my life, and I worried about it, was I met this beautiful blonde hair, blue eyed girl at Abilene Crash, Christian. Christian. <laughs> Sorry about that, babe. Abilene Christian. And guys, I know you've heard the story, but uh, see, somebody's phone even agrees with me that things are good. <laughs> oh, is it yours, babe? <laughs> Well, I'm not going to get into that, but anyway, uh, I really pray that God would help me find the right girl, and he did. And, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not bragging, but November the 3rd is she will have put up with me for 60 years. So I'm going for 60 more, guys, and I'm not going to worry about it, so, okay? The worry is, is something I, I saw a few... Uh, I guess you'd call them bum bumper stickers, and it said, uh, worry is because of an overactive worry gland. Now, I've never heard of a worry gland. Karen, you probably call it a, what, a thyroid? I don't know. <laughs> okay, but it said worry can cause very, uh, very deep migraine headaches. My wife will say this is so true. I taught for 40 years, and the last few years I taught, I started to experience terrible migraine headaches. And I thought it was because of the car wreck we were in. And you know, the day I retired, I never had another migraine. <laughs> so, and I prayed about it, and so thank you, God. But anyway, uh, it can cause sleeplessness. It can um, weak, uh, worry can ca cause heart palpitations, upset stomach, inability to relax, irritability, uh, whining. I, I hadn't thought about that one. Poor relationships. And most people who worry a lot brood on the negative. They will not take action to make any improvements. They prefer to stay in the state of uneasiness and apprehension. Here's another one that was really cute. Worrying is stewing about not doing. Why are we worrying when we are obsessed with a problem and not doing anything about it? When this happens, the wasps worry they are nesting in our heart. And they do it because we repeat a predictable thinking pattern. Constant worry is nothing but a habit. Worry is a conditioned response. That's what the, the experts say. That's not Keith Rogers talking. It's not a very pretty picture to have a wasp in your heart. So why do we do it? Well, why do wasps of worry build nests in our heart and sting us over, over, and over? And we can ask the question, one reason we worry is because life is hard. I think we'll all agree with that. As you get older, you know more about it, I guess. Bad things do happen to God's good people. When bad things happen, it causes frustration and fear, and we are forced to deal with those emotions, whether we like it or not. 
I can't stand up in front of you and preach some Pollyanna make-believe faith. Just pretend it's not happening, and it doesn't happen. We know differ. We all want a faith that can stand up to whatever the world deals us, and with God's help, we can overcome it all. What we need is something that will allow us to face harsh realities without being consumed with anxiety, worry, and Satan's power. We worry because our future is uncertain. We can prepare the best, and we know how. The best we know how. We are guided by God. You know, we can watch our diets, stockpile water, get survival food, and, and know that Iran is coming. We can buy guns and ammo to protect against tourists if they come. I have them. We can also worry because we're not in control of everything. Doctors get sick. Financial experts lose everything. Policemen are robbed. A lot of things happen to policemen nowadays. Lawyers get sued, but you know we're not in control. And who is it that's trying to control us? The king or the queen of wasps, and we call him Satan. Satan is trying to control us. We uh, just need to realize that, as Jesus said in verse 27, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Matter of fact, worry works just the opposite way as we've talked about. It doesn't make us healthy. It helps us, we'll start getting sick. We worry about losing a job. We can worry it causes anxiety which lowers your job's performance. Are you worried about gaining weight? What do I do when I worry? I eat. So, I mean, it's just counterproductive for me. We all know what we do when we're frustrated or worried or whatever. Here's a, a bumper sticker I loved. It said, worry never climbed a hill or paid a bill. Another sticker, worry never dried a tear or calmed a fear. Another bumper sticker, Worry never led a horse to water. I don't know about that one. <laughs> Worry never did a thing at Otter. I guess you call that Southern Arkansas, right? Worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but guess what? It'll get you nowhere. I like that one. Worry is not a rain dance, but helps produce solutions. It won't eliminate a problem or improve a situation. So worry makes it seem like we're making actions as we've talked about before. But action is worry's worst enemy. I had a good friend once suggest for worry, you take a three by five card and you carry it in your pocket. And the moment you come across the worry, you write that worry down and then put it in your pocket. And he said, you carry it throughout a week. You write down those worries you have. And then he said, on Sunday afternoon after church, pray about them. He said, pray about them at least once. And then when you're through, guess what? Tear them up. And I like that. And do that, of course, with God. Turn your worries and concerns, uh, turn your worries into concerns would be my last thing I would say. So just remember, God really cares. No matter what you do, God is there. Sue got me a coffee cup. Maybe your group got it for you. But it says, I am always close or I'm always near you. Did I say that right? We have several priorities. Oh, we have several priorities. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I like a coffee cup that says, God is with me. He is with us intimately. He's involved with us. If we'll just open the door. So when those uh, wasps of worry start swarming your heart, please remember you're not alone. Remember God is there. The 
congregation here is so good to have prayer partners too or prayer groups if you're struggling you know most of my life I've always kind of thought I mean, it made me too vulnerable if I wanted to be in a, a, a group but you know like Eisenhower said there are no atheists in foxholes well there should be warriors in warriors that's hard to say in foxhold with their brothers and sisters we are not in control, but we can pl place our God who is in control. We don't know the future, but praise God, we can place our future in Him. I don't know the, remember the invitation song uh, Dale has, but would like to offer you the invitation song. I hope you don't worry about what you just heard about worry. I praise you'll leave the best to God. Let's all stand for the invitation song, please.